Part 8 on the Indy 600. We got Dave hiding over here in the corner. He's a noob. That's why he missed the beer crack. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been on the channel before. And just Greg is here tonight. And, of course, Details is already doing details. So, uh, I don't know. We're going to get after it. Well, I got Rod in so we can start putting the front end together. And you want to show them what you're working on, Dennis? Well, the new used. Oh, this is a prize. Look, look at this. When's the last time you saw an original, not repainted, uh, uh, round tube trailing arm that clean? With somewhat of a decal left on it. Uh, it says 83 Polaris Indy Trail 440 on the back side over here. So these were an eBay find and I, I scooped them up. <laughs> that sled must have been mint. It's probably a shame they parted it, but they're going to live for a good reason with the Indy 600. This one comes with a spider nest, so we're gonna get rid of that. Details will detail that out. And then the, the last thing is, a buddy rebuilt these for me and I'm not gonna tell you who, just look up on Craigslist or Facebook and find your local shot guy. But uh, I had a good friend that rebuilt these, just really just changed the seals, dumped the oil, refilled and recharged. Uh, he let me watch. It's not too bad. But uh, I don't have the equipment here, especially the charging equipment. But uh, nice Fox shocks for the front of these two. Um, these are off a 93 XLT SP, so it was an 8-inch front. Uh, probably a few inches wider than this one. But they ought to work out just fine since they're off a, off an 8-inch. Gone. Mm. Got the spider web already? It's gone. Really? Okay, it's Friday afternoon. I haven't made any progress this week. I'll show you how far we got on Tuesday right after the intro with just Greg and Dave. Um, yeah, that's it. The radius rods are loosely hung. And that's because a couple more friends showed up Tuesday night, and I spent time with my friends. Family and friends are the most important things in this world. So, uh, you know, the sled waited. Uh, same thing Wednesday night, uh, different set of friends, but spent time with some more friends. Last night, I helped details a little bit with something, but didn't get any time for the trailer. So today's the day. I'm wasting a half a vacation day, but is it really wasted? I don't know, it'll be the judge once I tell you how much I got done this afternoon. And uh, it's important for me to get it done this afternoon because Saturday I'm helping details with the truck repair that we think is going to take all day. And Sunday is my day to put everything in storage. And once again, it's going to take all day. So if I want to keep this build going so I can get onto something else, like maybe the bullwhip or a skedaddle or something, i got to keep the build going. So I'll bring you back when there's something to look at. All right, things are coming together here. Let me give you a little quick look. So, trailing arms are on, and uh, shock and radius rods are just kind of loosely connected. And uh, you see this big aluminum rod? Well, this is how I do my preliminary alignment. So, uh, it works for both tow and uh, camber. So, right now, you can see at this end, it's way down. That means, that means I need to do a camber adjustment here. Um, to raise that up, obviously, I'm going to have to lengthen the upper radius rod. And uh, so I'm just going to start on this side and get it until the aluminum rod points right into the spindle over here. Then I'll switch the aluminum rod to the other side and repeat. And that'll be my camber adjustment. Literally a sip of beer later. And uh, I went three turns out on the upper radius rod. I just did it at the outer end. And you can see it's it's a hair high, but you know the the you're either the smallest you can move is half turn increments, and that's at the inner side, which is a gigantic pain in the ass to do. So I'm doing one full turn increments, and that's only a hair high. And let's face it, when you put the weight of the sled on it, it's going to tend to force the top in, which is going to force that down. So uh, you know if you got to err, err this way. 
uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to put the rod through the other side right now and uh, continue with the alignment procedure. All right, well, here we are on the other side. And you can see I need to make the lower radius rod longer this time. And uh, you're probably going, Nutter, how do you know that isn't bent? Well, it's pretty easy. All you do is spin it. And you can see if there's a lot of wobble. And yeah, there's a little bit of play in the spindles. But this is a 5 ace rod. It's not supposed to be a press fit. But you can see it always lands in the same spot. So uh, it's not bent. So measurements are good. So uh, I'm going to slip this bottom bolt out. And looks like... I will probably go one turn out, and hopefully that's all I need to do. All right, well, as you can see, that one turn adjustment was right on because the rod is now through both spindles. So next step, I'm going to lock down all the radius rods and uh, tighten those up, and then I'm going to set the toe. And if you're guessing that I'm going to set the toe with that rod through the spindles, you guessed right. So uh, I know somebody out there is screaming, Hey, you can't do an alignment with no weight on the front end. Well, A, I just did, and B, I can check it later, but I'm a hell of a lot closer now than I would be if I uh, didn't do these steps right now. So later on, I get the sled fully assembled. I'll get up my little magnetic uh, angle finder, verify everything, pull the tape measure on the skis for toe, and then good to go. All right, well, I'm still buttoning up the front end, and uh, one thing I decided I'm going to pause for a second and do is make some new steel sleeves for these shock bushings because they always come out looking like that. So I went to McMaster Car, and I bought this three-foot stick of seamless stainless steel tu tubing. I figured then it won't rust again. It's 3-ace ID, 5-ace OD. Uh, yep, the originals were 9 16th OD, but I just couldn't find that tubing. So uh, I'll just make them out of this, and uh, I'll just ram a drill bit through those uh, rubber bushings a little bit, and this should slide right in, and everything should be good. All right, here's my little bushings. Nothing to them, just 5 ace OD, 3 ace ID stainless tube, like I said. So I do have to ram a drill bit through the uh, shock here to get them to fit. Just a normal 5 ace drill bit. So uh, let's see how that goes. Well, I've been at this for quite a while now. Really, probably hour and a half, two hours since the last time I turned on the camera. Um, front ends coming together. Alignment's looking good. But when I set the toe, look at how much thread I've got exposed here. That's way too much. So what I'm going to end up doing is popping the spindles off on each side, swinging them one spline in, and putting them back uh, just so I can keep this thread engagement reasonable and that's the same at both ends of the tie rod so there's a ton of room there okay front suspension is together man that took a while everything's torqued everything's snugged um you know alignment's good you can tell because i can just pull this right out and start it again so everything's good. So there's only one le thing left to do on the alignment. I, I don't know if you can see this. The handlebars are a long ways from centered. And uh, I'm going to have to lower the sled down to do that. But, you know, I've got the tie rods equal at all. All exposed threads are the same length. So this is the time to center up the handlebars then. Of course, you do that with this link here, which will have to shorten up a little bit. Uh, let's see. What else was I going to show you? I think I wanted to show you a couple more secret weapon tools so the inner radius rod uh jam nuts that's a crow's foot on a long extension 11 16 for the uppers three quarter for the lowers let's you reach right in there and get those jam nuts out and then uh this one's huge quarter inch drive air ratchet i'm sure electric would be fine too but the secret is the socket it's the uh, seldom seen 9 16 inch quarter drive socket you can find them 
I'll put a link up for you in the description. The, the thing that's nice about this is I can reach right up in, get the upper shock bolts, and snug them down. You know, I've still got to go in with a couple hand wrenches for the final torque, but 90% of the work happens with this. Oh boy, is it ever a time saver. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to keep going on this front suspension, and we'll bring you back in a little bit. All right, well, there is how far my handlebars are off after the alignment procedure. So, uh, like I said... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna adjust this guy until I get him back to straight ahead now and I still have the rod through the spindle so I know this is straight ahead well here's an issue that tie rod has run all the way up as short as it goes and it needs to get shorter damn it oh well I guess I'll pull the thing off and uh, run over to bandsaw quick and take like a quarter inch off each end Retap if I need to. It'll be fine. That's good. All right. Well, I got the bars straight, and uh, without a doubt, a lot of people are going to ask me, how do you know they're straight? Well, I used a tape measure. So uh, I just pulled the tape from, uh, you know, back here, this corner, up to the bars and made sure it's the same on each side. I don't know how it could get any easier than that. They sure look straight to me. I mean, they're certainly straight to within a sixteenth of an inch, which is way better than I need. So, uh, there you go. Well, it's been a long afternoon rebuilding this front end. I came out here at noon. It's a quarter to seven now. Fighting rusty junk right up until the end, and modifying stuff to make everything perfect and right and ah you, you just watched the video you know what i did so um the oh so controversial gripper skis are on it now i gotta get some longer bolts for uh, where the ski ski through the spindle bolt is uh the ones that came with the skis were like too big metric stuff just a little too big but uh anyways the front end is all buttoned up aligned ready to ride I'm happy with it. I'm super happy with it. This is going to be the tightest I've ever had on a trailing arm Indy for the front suspension. Uh, I'm happy with the ride height. I was taking a stab at it, and it doesn't look crazy high. I know it's going to come down a little when I put the motor in and add coolant and all that stuff, but uh, I don't know. So far, I'm very happy. What can I say? Um, so I want to say thanks to the patrons, Aaron Shriver, Michael Johnson, Matt DeFossi, Charles Myers, Alex Shirell, Brandon Pariseau, Dan Hosnut, Mike Jerish, Louis Brady, Jeff Eisert, and Brian Peters. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your support of the channel. And uh, if you uh, want to get your name up here on the video and you want to show your support of the channel, head over to the patron page. And, uh, you know, what we actually use that support money for is, like, basically buying pizza and beer for the guys when they're around. Um Yep, the guys weren't here today. Well, I took the afternoon off and they didn't, but I got her done. So uh, there you go. Uh, details promises he'll be in the next video more. So uh, thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the trails. Hi, Farley. <laughs>